personally, I, I can see why and how beneficial Ibogaine can be to the veteran community. Uh, so I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say. I, I know it's going to be really engaging and the floor is yours, guys. Uh, take it away. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, wow, what a great introduction. <laughs> I'm Marcus Capone. This is my wife, Amber. Um, I'm a retired uh, United States Navy SEAL after 13 years uh, in the SEAL teams and seven combat tours to both Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, I began the transition back into the private sector. We naively assumed that life would somehow return to normal, even though we really didn't know normal at that point. So much had changed since 9-11 and so much had changed for our family. I expected there to be challenges during this transition phase, but I didn't expect for each year to become increasingly more difficult. Marcus was suffering from debilitating depression, mood fluctuations, insomnia, impulsivity, memory loss, cognitive impairment, and uncontrollable headaches. He said on numerous occasions that our family would be better off without him here. So I knew that time was of the essence. At the height of our struggles, one of Marcus's former teammates took his life. And upon the post-mortem autopsy of his brain, he was found to have interface astroglial scarring, also known as blast scarring, which is a microscopic injury resulting from the cumulative effects of blast wave exposure. Suddenly, everything made sense. Another SEAL brain autopsy shortly thereafter showed both blast scarring and chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is also referred to as CTE. It's a degenerative brain disease commonly found in the post-mortem brains of NFL players and other contact sport athletes. Marcus played tackle football for 15 years before joining the military and then spent the following 13 years as a breacher working with explosives. His 28 year history of repeated concussive, subconcussive and blast injury events was surely the root cause of this incredible suffering. Now more than ever, I knew we were beginning a battle that would require expediency and unconventional thinking. I began getting Marcus into the nation's leading brain clinics, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, transcranial magnetic stimulation, you name it, we tried it. Marcus experienced mild overall improvement at best, and if anything, he was growing more and more disheartened and frustrated with each unsuccessful attempt. After 18 months of failed avenues, we were both running out of hope, and I knew we were running out of time. In complete desperation, I remember the story of a friend who spoke highly of an outside-of-the-box treatment that he pursued in Mexico. He attributed this treatment to saving his life and knew uh, the, the depth of our struggles. He suggested that it would be good for Marcus. It took a lot of convincing, but I was determined to, mark, to get Marcus there too. Not even knowing why or how this treatment may help us, we were just that desperate. You know, at that point, um, I really would have tried anything. Um, I was really skeptical uh, initially that anything would actually work at this point. Um, I found that the medicine um, that I was going to be using at this specific retreat was something called Ibogaine, which everyone here has heard of before. Um, so I did a little bit of research, you know, on its history, on its effects. Um, and I just really had to Mexico really not knowing what to expect at all. Um, my experience was brutal. Uh, any of you out there has been through an Ibogaine and Iboga experience, it's, it's definitely not uh, enjoyable. Um, it was one of the hardest things I've done in my life. Um, I really, you know, I relived past traumas. I fought demons. Um, I purged for almost eight hours, uh, I was told by my amazing therapist. Um, I hope she's watching today. Um, but you know what? The next day I felt reborn. I was fresh. I was new. I was excited. And um, I saw Amber uh, in the hallway at this retreat, and I just turned to her and said, "You know, we have to we have to share with the world. We have to, you know, first tell our friends, share with our friends, and then share with the, you know, the rest of the community and, and the population that's suffering from, you know, mental health uh, injuries." We definitely had a period of what just happened. We were afraid that it was too good to be true, that it wouldn't last or it wouldn't work the same for everyone. We did want to help our friends, but we wanted to do it cautiously and with great care. 
Our initial goal was for 12 other SEALs, friends of ours, to have the same experience and for Marcus's results to last for 12 months before we took this effort to the next level. We attained the 12 and 12 goal with no problem. Our next goal was 100 special operations soldiers to experience Ibogaine and for a retrospective study to be completed on the majority of them. If things were looking the way they appeared to be shaping up, we'd abandon the grassroots effort and bring a robust and dedicated organization mainstream. In 2019, VETS was founded. Mm -hmm. 